Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. In the last Ironman video, I showed you the electronics inside the motorized wireless helmet with light up eyes. Today, we're going to look at the electronics for the rest of the Ironman suit, including hopefully powering up the extremely bright Unibeam. So the Unibeam of the suit is something that I made some time ago. It consists of six 10 watt LEDs. Um, there's a two part series already on this. Um, and this is fitted onto a 3D printed and aluminium strip chassis. Um, and all of this is basically the mechanics that hold the whole of the strapping system together. So basically we need to fit the batteries, the transmitter electronics for the helmet, and the control electronics for the unibeam into the suit somewhere, um, and wire those in so they can be activated whilst it's being worn. So let's see what we've got in terms of electronics. Um, I've got the helmet here, if I just turn that on. See the light, the eyes illuminate for a bit and then they should go off again. Um, and the transmitter electronics are basically this piece of board that's just got a voltage regulator and two switches on, and there's a microcontroller and a wireless transmitter. So if I turn that on, um, that should transmit to the helmet, and um, there's more details on this in the, the original video, but it transmits to the display in the helmet that everything's ready. And if I scroll through with these buttons, um, we can operate different functions in the helmet, open, close, the eyes, and one for the unibeam. So if I go to open, and then hit the button, the select button opens the faceplate, and if we scroll through to close again, should close it, turns on the eyes for four seconds, and then they turn off again. So basically we need to fit the transmitter into the suit, the idea was that would be mounted. There's hardly, you know, these boards are quite small, so there's plenty of space for them. And we were going to have the two switches for for scrolling and select mounted into the hip pods using magnetic reed switches. So these are switches that switch when you put a magnet near them. And the aim was that I'd have one of those in each hip pod, and then I would have magnets in the finger of the glove. And that means I don't need to have wires going down the arm or anything like that. The um, whole thing can be mounted in the body. Um, to drive the Unibeam, I've got this board, which is a Velleman kit, um, and this is a PWM driver, which is going to link to the microcontroller. There's an analog out on this microcontroller board, along with its follower op-amp. This is a Pickaxe 08M board, and um, this is a hefty PWM, which will drive the Unibeam LEDs, all 60 watts of them. And it's all going to be powered off these batteries, which are also going to be mounted in the torso. Now, these are nickel metal hydride batteries. I could use something more modern like um, LiPos and so on, which would be much higher drain and much higher capacity, although there is some fire hazard with those. In fact, they're often supplied with an exploding bag for charging in case they catch fire. So I happen to have these batteries already, um, so I'm going to be using these to drive it. They're a bit heavier than the LiPos, but they're going to be safer. I've also got this soundboard, which I showed you in a previous video. It's an MD Fly MP3 playing board. And the aim was to have a sound system in the suit as well to play sound effects. Um, as it is, I'm actually going to leave this board out for now. We can always put it in later because it's only tiny, along with an amp and some speakers. Um, I've actually got another project I want to use that in, so I'm not going to build that into this suit right now. So let's have a look where the electronics are going to fit. So here's the back of the torso with the uh, front of the unibeam on and the plan was to put the battery somewhere in here. We've actually got this metal thing and there's actually quite a big cavity behind it where the electronics were going to go. So I was going to attempt to mount the electronics, uh, sorry the batteries each side of it and I've 3D printed these special battery holders which I can put a strap round and so this can be glued onto the body and that holds the battery in place. So those are going to go one way up or the other, somewhere at the sides, and then we'll hopefully squeeze those little boards underneath there. Whether I need to chop a piece out of this panel or not remains to be seen, and then I have to fit this somewhere, uh, which probably involves turning this round, so basically unscrewing the heatsink and flattening this piece, flattening these resistors that are sticking up, so that it will fit underneath, and then hopefully we can get all three boards in there.
So I've got all my wiring done. Um, so I've got all of the circuits attached to this white board, which fits neatly into the back of Iron Man. So that's my uh, wireless transmitter, the microcontroller. That's just the power supply regulator and a bit of a breakout board for some of the cables. And that's the PWM controller. And now I've flattened down the heat sink and those resistors. So uh, we've got two long wires that come off here, still to a bit of breadboard for the menu switches. And we can still see that the if I press these, it still transmits wirelessly into the helmet for the different options. Um, if I select Unibeam and then I select it, we should now find that the microcontroller on the transmitter powers up the PWM, powers up the incredibly bright Unibeam. And that's set to power up to full, hold it for three seconds, and then it should fade down again. So basically it's so bright, um, you can see it blacking the camera out there. It gives you a chance to look away um, as it gets brighter and brighter rather than just blinding everyone. So um, I'm gonna try and fit this back into the back of the suit now. Obviously we've got this on long wires here so that we can run the cables to the front of the suit for the Unibeam. So let's put that all together and I'll attempt to put it on. So my electronics are all fitted. I've got the batteries fitted in. Those are glued to the back of this, uh, or at least to the torso armour, but in their battery holders that I showed you. And I've just got a Velcro strap on each one to hold it in place. The aerial wire is this white wire, which you can just about see running up over the shoulder. And then obviously the power wires run up to the shoulder where the unibeam attaches there. So that uh, has this multi, multi huge connector, which plugs in, so that hooks on there. And uh, we should be able to plug that together. And if we're lucky, here we go. So we've still got the switches are still on breadboard and they're going to remain on breadboard for this video for reasons I'll explain in a moment. But let's just scroll through back on the wireless helmet. There we go, so that says Unibeam. And if I power it up, there it goes. That is incredibly bright, you can feel the warmth coming off it. So let's see what it looks like on. Alright, so here we are, so I've got my um, helmet on, I can still read the display in here. I've still got these buttons on breadboard. The reason for that is I haven't made the fill-in sections yet, which are actually going to have the hip pods mounted on. Um, and those are going to be made of a rubber material, which I'm going to talk about in my next video next week, so watch out for that. Um, so I can still scroll through um, using this, so we can close the faceplate and so on. Let me just open that again. There we go, and the transmitting and receiving seems to be working fine. Obviously the aerial is just in uh, one of the shoulders for transmitting, and the receiver one is in the top of the helmet, so that works quite well. So um, let's just scroll through to the Unibeam and turn that on. There we go, nice and bright. And then it powers down again. Um, not only does that conserve battery power, but as I said before, it gives people a chance to look away. So let's just um, put the, the chest plate on over there. We'll have another look. There we go. So that's nice and diffused through the uh, clear PLA diffuser that I 3D printed a while ago. You can have a look, look back through my channel to have a look for that. Um, and there we go. So don't forget to like my Facebook page for sneak peeks and future updates and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for further updates. I've also got a Patreon crowdfunding campaign running at the moment with some exclusive rewards including access to a live broadcast with me and access to my private subreddit and all my digital downloads for free. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots for more information.